Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis and target identification of the Kirkizone diterpenes. The work that we will be looking at in this video was published in JAX by the groups of Alexander Adabekian and Ming Ji Dai. The Kirkizone diterpenes which this work investigates, were first isolated by Clardy and co-workers in 1986 from the Jatropha Kirkus plant. These compounds show potent anti-cancer activity against a broad range of human cancer cells, and they do this by acting on BRAT1, a protein involved in the cellular response to DNA damage. This paper also goes into detail about how this was elucidated, and I'll cover this in a separate video in future. Structurally, the common feature of the Kirkizone diterpenes is the tricyclic 675 carbon framework, which is present in all of the molecules studied in this work. So let's start with the retrosynthesis. In this work, the authors synthesized five different naturally occurring products, all of them derived from the same tricyclic intermediate. These include the structurally similar Kirkizones A, B, C, and D, the dimerized compound dimer Kirkizone A, and the compounds spirochircazone and pyrochircazone, which are produced by rearrangement reactions altering the carbon framework of the tricyclic system. This tricyclic intermediate, common to all of these compounds, could be synthesized using an aldol cascade of a tricyclic compound bearing a cyclic acetal. This in turn could be produced using a Claisen rearrangement of an ether diene. This would be installed by reducing an alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde and coupling it to the enone using a Mitsunobu reaction, and the precursor to this could be synthesized using a vanilligous Mukayama aldol reaction of s peryaldehyde a relatively cheap starting material, which forms the basis of this synthesis. So let's look at the forward synthesis. The vanilligous Mukayama aldol reaction starts with the silylation of the aldehyde oxygen and the deprotonation of the beta position with triethylamine. Parallel to this, triethyl orthoformate is activated with boron trifluoride. This forms an oxocarbenium electrophile, which is attacked by the beta position of the conjugated silyl enol ether. This produced the target acetal as a single diastereomer due to the steric effects of the isoprenyl group, which blocks one face of the ring. This compound was taken forward without purification, where the aldehyde was reduced using sodium borohydride to produce the primary alcohol in a 73% yield over two steps. This alcohol was then reacted in a Mitsunobu reaction. Triphenylphosphine adds to diethyl azodicarboxylate, more commonly known as DEAD, and this creates a zwitterionic intermediate, which is able to deprotonate the hydroxyl group of the cyclopentanone. The primary hydroxyl group can then act as a nucleophile towards the phosphonium species, which activates it and allows it to act as an electrophile, which is displaced by the alkoxide, forming the ether bond together with the elimination of triphenylphosphine oxide. This product was also taken forward without purification, where it was reacted in a Claisen rearrangement. This is a 3-3 sigmatropic rearrangement, which creates a new carbon-carbon single bond, together with the formation of a ketone and an exocyclic alkene. This diketone can tautomerize into its enol form, which is able to undergo transacetylization with the diethyl acetal forming the tricyclic target in a 48% yield over two steps. This reaction produced only one isomer, and this stereochemistry was proven by X-ray crystallography. The next step of the synthesis was the 1-2 addition of lithium ethyl vinyl ether, producing a tertiary alcohol which was required for the aldol cascade that would form the seven-membered ring at the core of the target molecule. This cascade was promoted by iron trichloride and TMS chloride, and formed the target compound in a 46% yield over two steps. This cascade starts with the coordination of the tertiary alcohol to the iron trichloride, which acts as an electron sink and triggers a fragmentation of the molecule, breaking the carbon-oxygen bond of the cyclic acetal and unmasking an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone upon elimination of the hydroxyl group. The ethyl-vinyl ether moiety is then attacked by the chloride, 
which unmasks the reactive enolate, which undergoes intramolecular addition to the oxocarbenium ion, forming the seven-membered ring and an alpha-beta-unsaturated dione species. This produced two diastereomers. The first, which has an antiperiplanar relationship between the alpha-hydroxyl group and the ethyl ether, undergoes spontaneous elimination to form the seven-membered dienone, whereas its other diastereomer, with a pseudo-equatorial relationship between the alpha-hydroxyl group and the ethyl ether, requires heat with tosylic acid to promote this elimination. With the tricyclic carbon framework now complete, the authors set about installing the correct functionality around this core. This proceeded with a Johnson alpha-iodination reaction. In this reaction, DMAP acts as a nucleophile and undergoes conjugate addition to the enone group forming an enolate intermediate, which reacts with iodine and is then deprotonated by pyridine to restore the enone structure. Mechanistically, this reaction is quite similar to a bayless hillman reaction. This newly installed iodide was required for the next reaction, which was a stilly coupling. This reaction starts with the oxidative addition of a palladium zero species into the carbon-iodine bond, where it then undergoes transmetallation with tetramethyl tin forming a methyl palladium species, which then undergoes reductive elimination to form the methylated product in a 57% yield over two steps. This is quite a simplified version of this mechanism, and I've linked a paper below, which goes through the mechanism of this reaction in much more detail. To complete the synthesis of Curcuzon A and B, the authors then had to methylate the alpha position of the other ketone group. This was accomplished by deprotonating the alpha position to form an enolate, which then reacted with methyl iodide to form the target compounds in a one-to-one mixture in a 63% overall yield. With these curcuzones in hand, they could then be transformed into other members of this family. Two of these transformations could be carried out by reacting tetramethylethylene diamine with oxygen gas in methanol. The first of these rearrangements starts with an isomerization of the alpha-beta unsaturated ketone, moving the double bond away from the bridge between the five and seven membered rings. This ketone could then undergo a tautomerization, allowing for a 1-5 shift to occur, causing a ring contraction together with the formation of a new carbon-carbon bond and a spirocyclic ring junction. This dienol then undergoes another tautomerization to revert back to an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone completing the synthesis of spirocurcazone in a 60% yield. In this same reaction mixture, an oxidative rearrangement also occurs. This begins with an identical isomerization of the alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. However, an epoxide can also form on the ring junction between the seven and five-membered rings. When this occurs, methanol can then undergo a Michael addition to the conjugated system and the enolate produced can intramolecularly abstract a proton, forming an exocyclic ketone and triggering the opening of the epoxide ring to form a tertiary alcohol. The enol then tautomerizes back to a ketone, and a carbon-carbon bond of the five-membered ring can also break, together with the protonation of the exocyclic alkene and the formation of another ketone on the seven-membered ring. The enol of this species can undergo intramolecular conjugate addition to the alpha-beta unsaturated enone, again forming an enolate intermediate. This eliminates the methoxide to complete the synthesis of pyrocurcazone in a 21% yield. From the mixture of curcuzones A and B, the authors could also synthesize curcuzones C and D using a molybdenum-promoted alpha-hydroxylation. Deprotonation of the alpha-proton using KHMDS, forms an enolate which reacts with the oxodiperoxymolybdenum pyridine hexamethyl phosphoric triamide, which installs a hydroxyl group, forming curcuzone C and D in a 63% yield in a 1 to 1 diastereomeric ratio. With these in hand, the authors could then complete the final compound of the synthesis, which was dimer curcuzone A. The alpha hydroxyl group is first mesylated using mesyl chloride and triethylamine and the resulting compound is then heated at 150 degrees with triethylamine, which promotes a dimerization reaction, 
to form dimer curcusone A in an 18% yield over two steps. Interestingly, this reaction only formed one isomer. So let's look at the mechanism of this transformation. Triethylamine first promotes the elimination of the mesyl group, forming a dienone. This can undergo a diels alder reaction with another molecule of the dienone, forming the carbon-carbon bonds, which links the two sides of the dimer. The resulting enone can then undergo chelotropic elimination with the loss of carbon dioxide to form dimer curcusone A as a single isomer. This is likely due to steric hindrance from the tricyclic ring system, which only allows the dienophile to approach from one face of the molecule. So with that dimerization, we have completed the synthesis of five members of the Kirkison family. This work is the first total synthesis of these five compounds. The researchers were able to produce Kirkisons A and B in just nine steps, C and D in 10 steps, and dimer Kirkison A in 12 steps. All of these compounds were derived from S-perialdehyde, which is quite cheap at just over a dollar per gram. These compounds are highly sought after for their anti-cancer activity, and the synthesis of these compounds has allowed for the target of their anti-cancer activity to be identified. We'll look at this target identification in the next Simplifying Synthesis video, so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to see when it goes live.